Howdy guys, it's Mavi, your friendly neighborhood technician, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. Just kind of <clears throat> drinking some coffee this morning and getting my day going. I got a bunch of projects I'm finishing up, building an engine on a Ford Escort. Been working on that all summer. I'm just about done with that, getting ready to deliver it, so I'm excited about that. Uh, the Toyota uh, 4Runner that turned into a rust nightmare. That's uh, starting to hit the downhill side, so I'm happy about that. But this morning I was just drinking some coffee out of my awesome pig pig mug here. Isn't that cool? I like this mug, man. I like that pig. Anyways, um, so I was just sitting here drinking some coffee, getting my day going, and I realized that lately I've had quite a few people ask me about buying a used car and have asked my advice, and I give I give my advice and. Lo and behold, they follow my advice and they get a good car. And so I thought, you know, if if they if aren't that good, because over the years they really, really uh, have a pretty good track record for buying used cars. And, you know, the person that's buying them not have to service that car for at least a year or more. And that's always been my goal in buying a used car. Make sure I buy something that's in good enough condition that once I spend twenty five, thirty five, five thousand dollars $5,000, on a used car, all I got to do is really put a set of tires, brakes, oil change, maybe some spark plugs, and uh, maintenance it myself, and then I'm done. And then I normally don't have to maintenance or service that car for a couple of years. And I think that that should be everybody's goal. So how do I, um, from knowledge, expertise, experience, buy a used car? Well, let's uh, go ahead and grab a pen and some paper, and let's build some notes together. So, so. Actually, the first thing that I do when I'm looking at buying a used car is I consider what exactly is it that I want to buy. So I consider my needs. So number one would be what are my needs? What are my needs? Okay, so number one are is what are my needs? Let's see, I've got a wife, I've got four kids, I need a large car, uh, something that can fit a large family in, it needs to be dependable. Um, from there, I actually go a little bit deeper. And I go, not only does it need to be a big car, not only does it need to be dependable, not only does it need to get good gas mileage, all that other good stuff, um, it also needs to be a known vehicle that doesn't have a bunch of engineering or manufacturing defects. So let's talk like the the Ford Triton engine, okay? I don't care what you say. I know that there's some people out there that have had great experience with the Ford Triton engine, but bottom line is there are a lot more people out there that have had horrible experiences with the Ford Triton engine. I advise people don't ever buy an Expedition, or an F-150 or any type of Ford vehicle that has a Triton engine in it, you will regret it. Uh, they're problematic, they're high maintenance, all that other good stuff. And they have a lot of manufacturing and engineering defects. So, so number one, what are my needs? And based off of those needs, what type of vehicle should I get? Toyota doesn't have a whole lot of manufacturing defects. Nissan has a good track record. Uh, some Fords have good track records. Um, you know, stuff like that. So number one, what are my needs? Number two, what type of vehicle will meet my needs? And so then number three will be, does that vehicle have a good manufacturing track record? And guys, when I show you my notes, don't make fun of me. My, my writing is terrible. So, so far right now, you want to buy a used car and the first thing you want to think of are what are my needs and then the second thing you want to think of is what type of vehicle will meet your needs and then number three once you find that vehicle whether it be an SUV 
whether it be a sedan, whether it be a sports car. Uh, once you figure that out, then number three is going to be, does that vehicle have a good manufacturing track record? So let's say you go, oh, I would really like to buy, and I'm going to pick on Ford Triton again, a Ford Expedition. I found one, and it has a Triton engine in it. Well, you really don't want to buy that one because the Triton engine is a discontinued engine, and it's got a bad manufacturing and engineering track record it's a problematic engine so so once you figure out what your needs are what type of vehicle will meet those needs go ahead and do your research on that vehicle and see how many issues and problems has that vehicle had um, I would much rather buy a used 2012 2013 14 15 Ford F-150 than a used 2005 to 2010 Ford F-150. 2010, around 2010, 11 was when the Triton was discontinued and they redesigned it from the ground up. So anything after 2010 for me, uh, for the Ford F-150 or Expedition is safe, but I wouldn't buy anything beyond that with a Triton engine in it. I'd go with the four six liter or what have you. So, so yeah, just because a certain year model or period of your model is has a bad track record it doesn't mean that the ones before that or the ones after that have a bad track track record so what are my needs what type of vehicle will meet my needs does that vehicle have a good manufacturing track record all right so we've got that figured out and so we're gonna say that we want to go and find a to uh, actually we're gonna say we want to go find uh, Oldsmobile <clears throat> a Buick Park Avenue Ultra I actually got one here okay so we want to find a Buick Park Avenue Ultra. It'll meet our needs. We're happy with the track record it has. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of problems and the problems that it does have, I can, I can financially deal with should they come up. All right, once I've got all that figured out, now I actually want to find a vehicle, okay? And right now, when I want to find a vehicle, so then number four will be find vehicle, okay? Now, I would really encourage you to stay away from third-party lots stay away from tow your note lots um the way they, they do business nine times out of ten is they buy these cars at auction they have a certain amount of budget that they can spend on that car uh if they can't fix that car for that amount of budget then they normally kick them back out but if they can they do the best they can and then they put them on the lot and sell them to you sometimes that budget is as low as like a hundred dollars per car and I'm I just be honest with you, we all had to get our start somewhere. In the beginning, I worked at a few Tote Your Note lots. That it's very rare to find an extremely experienced technician at a Tote Your Note lot. So I would stay away from third-party lots and stuff like that um, because of like credit and financing. If you absolutely need to finance a used car, then I would go with the big dealers because they report to the credit bureaus and all that other stuff, so you can build your credit along with buying your car. But the number one game, uh, key to the game of buying a used car to me is buying from a private seller because if you do it right, you can know exactly what you're buying, who you're buying from, where that car has been, all the issues it's ever had and all that other good stuff. So once you find the vehicle that you want, let's say you're on Craigslist or you're on Facebook and you find the Oldsmobile, the Buick that you want, don't worry too much about the car at first. Worry about the people. Research the people. Study the people. So number five will be, after find a vehicle, number five will be study owner. Okay? And ask yourself, who is the owner? And, you know, as you meet these people, who are they? Are they an older couple, which older couples tend to be a little bit more conservative, and they tend to take care of their vehicles more so the chances are they bought it brand new and there's a good chance that they've serviced it accordingly all throughout its time the vehicle has been insured it hasn't been driven extremely hard nobody's been hot rotting it around it's been well taken care of or are they a younger couple you know we've all been there done that we've been young and dumb and you know it might it might have been toting kids around, so the interior might be a little bit stained and all tore up in it, um, you know, because younger people like to drive fast. Maybe somebody's driven the heck out of that car. 
look at the mileage on it too. The national average here in the great US of A is around 12, 13,000 miles a year. So do the math on, on the mileage. So, so let's stop right there. And so right now we've got five steps to buying a used car. Step one, what are my needs? Figure out what you need. Step two, what type of vehicle will meet my needs? Pick out a vehicle. Once you pick out a vehicle, go to step three. Does that vehicle have a good manufacturing and engineering track record? Make sure you're not buying a nightmare. Number four, go ahead and find whatever it is that you want that meets your needs, that has a good manufacturing track record, go ahead and find one. Try to stick with a private seller. Number five, study the owner. Set up a meet and greet, study the owner, figure out who you're buying from. Is it somebody that takes care of their equipment? Look at their house, look at their, their yard. Is this somebody who is neat and tidy? or are they sloppy? If they're neat and tidy, chances are they're gonna take care of their stuff. If they're sloppy, chances are the vehicle's not gonna be that well taken care of. A lot of times, older couples take care of their stuff. Younger couples don't. It's just the way things work. So study the owner, know who you're buying from. After that, once you've got all that figured out and you feel good, you feel comfortable, hey, uh, you know, this is the car that I want, the mileage is there, and all that other good stuff, start looking at the car. Let's talk about mileage real quick. National average, 12, 13,000. So don't buy a car that's four years old that has 180,000 miles on it because that's way over the national average, I think. I don't do math in my head, I write it down. So actually, let's just make it two years. Let's say somebody's driven, let's say in two years, somebody has driven 50,000 miles. That's 25,000 miles a year times two, you know, that's that's 50,000 miles, not times two. See, it, you're gonna laugh at me because if I do it on paper, it doesn't matter how difficult the math is, if I do it on paper, then uh, it, it's perfect. All right, back, back to it. 25 plus 25 is 50, so, if it's a two-year-old car and it has 50,000 miles, that means they've been driving it 25,000 miles a year times two years there. And uh, that's a lot of miles. So as far as I'm concerned, if I see something that has math like that on the mileage that adds up, I get a little concerned that that car has been driven real hard. And so uh, the best way to explain it is that car might be a little tired and I really don't want a car that's tired and it's been driven hard. So I probably, regardless of how nice it looks, regardless of how nice the price is, I probably want to pass on that car because the mileage does not meet with the national average. Okay. So we'll make that number six. Check mileage compare to national average. All right. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I think this is some pretty good stuff here. So number one, what are what are your needs? What are my needs? What what do I need in a used car? All that other good stuff. Number two. What type of vehicle? Go ahead and figure out what type of vehicle. In our case, we're gonna be looking at a Buick Park Avenue Ultra. Number three, once you figured out what type of vehicle you want, go ahead and do your research. Figure out there's been all kinds of problems. Does it have a discontinued engine, transmission, you name it, manufacturing, engineering issues. Once you figure that out, if you pass that, go ahead and go to number four. Go ahead and find a vehicle. Try to stick with a private seller if possible. Number five, once you find that vehicle, study the owner, know who you're buying from, figure out if it looks like they take care of their stuff or if they don't, all that other good stuff. That now leads us into number six. Start checking the mileage on the car, see if the car has been driven into the ground, does it compare to the national average or does it have a bunch of miles on it, all that other good stuff. Once you've done that, then you can go to number seven and we'll call that open the hood and check and I'll show you some key areas to check that'll tell you if a vehicle has been properly serviced you want to look for oil leaks and all that other stuff first of all if you're if you're trying to buy a car that is dependable and reliable then it should as far as I'm concerned it shouldn't have any oil leaks but 
let's be real, you're not going to find a car that has zero oil leaks and has mileage below the national average that is in almost perfect condition for 1500 bucks. You're really not even going to find one for 2500 bucks. You got to get on up into five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars if you want cars that that have everything lines up for you perfectly so on some of this stuff you do got to sacrifice a little bit and you just got to kind of decide for yourself what to go with so go ahead open the hood and start looking for signs that the vehicle has been taken care of i'm gonna go ahead and pause it here and we'll go look at a vehicle real quick okay folks the camera work might get a little funky here because the way i have it set up but so we're going to be looking at a 3800 and a buick okay now it needs some work, but just kind of show you some areas to check. You want to check, let me make sure you can see here. Okay, you want to check valve covers, all right? You want to look around this area, see where the valve cover is. You want to look around this area, see if there's any oil leaking, see if there's any seepage. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be, be wet in order for there to be oil, okay? As you see here, it's just, it's, it's been seeping. It hasn't necessarily been leaking where it makes puddles on the ground, but it's been seeping. And so it's just wet enough to build up grime and grease and all that gunk all over the engine. So if you see something like this, you know that you need to get a good deal on it because it's definitely going to need some maintenance. Now, when you see oil leaks that are coming out of valve covers or oil pans underneath the engine and stuff like that some of that is general maintenance and that may be why they're selling the car the car runs just fine but it needs general maintenance so again you just need to decide for yourself if that's something that you want to get into uh check your battery connections as well make sure that they're not all nasty that this will tell you i've met a lot of people that yeah, tell them, hey, your battery connections are bad. Do you want me to go ahead and clean that up? Oh, no, don't worry about it. I'll just leave it. So nine times out of ten, if battery connections are clean, it's probably because somebody takes good care of their car. And so even though this car has oil, <coughs> oil leaks and stuff, this lady takes good care of it because when it has issues, she brings it to me to get it fixed. And we fix it, and it runs great. So, so you know, just look at different areas check for oil leaks on valve covers check intakes make sure th there's no leaks there check throttle bodies look at gaskets look at overall cleanliness of the engine look at things see like these these wires they look they look pretty fresh so uh, i know because if i remember right i think i did the tune-up on this thing a while back ago so you know those wires they look pretty fresh so it looks like somebody's done a tune-up on this you know look for for stuff like that look for signs that it's been worked on and signs that it's been wrecked i'll tell you what signs that it's been wrecked are you can look at like fender nuts and bolts and you can tell if they've ever been removed see how clean that paint is even though it's dirty the paint right there is pretty clean and so when you put a socket in here a torx bit in here or something it gets all scratched up these have never been taken out so you can tell stuff like that you can look and see if welds have been broken anything like that so that's just a few pointers on things to look at all right let's go ahead and get back in the shop there okay so now that you got some ideas of stuff to look for that'll make number eight inspection so then number nine is going to be research and then number 10 will be make offer okay so let's start from the top here and buying a used car first thing you want to do first thing i do is what are my needs what type of vehicle do i want what type of vehicle do i need what are my budget all that other good stuff once I figure that out, then I'll figure out what type of vehicle will meet those needs. Is it a Ford SUV? Is it a Toyota Camry? Is it this or is that? Once I figure out what vehicle now I'm going to get, we want to do some research on that vehicle and make sure it doesn't come with a bunch of manufacturing defects and engineer issues. Make sure that it hasn't had a bunch of issues in the past. 
make sure we're not buying a nightmare then I want to go ahead and go with a private seller so that's one two three now we're at number four I want to go ahead and find a vehicle uh, find a Toyota Camry, find a Ford F-150, find whatever vehicle it is that I've come up with and done my research on. Then from there, I want to study the owner. Who am I buying from? What are the chances that this person takes good care of their car versus the chances that they don't take good care of their car? Uh, are they honest? Are they dishonest? Stuff like that. After that, I want to check the mileage on the car, compare it to the national average. So now we're number five and number six. You know, uh, check the mileage, make sure it compares to the national average, make sure it hasn't been driven a whole lot and all that other good stuff, you know, ran into the ground, driven hard, stuff like that. Once you've got all that figured out, go ahead, open the hood and check. And I kind of showed you, check valve cover gaskets, stick your head underneath it, check it for leaks. Check it for dirt and grime. Make sure nothing's been seeping or is wet underneath there, all that other good stuff. And then just overall inspect the vehicle. Look at belts. Look at all that other good stuff. Know what you're getting ready to get into. After that, don't make an offer yet. Go ahead and tell them that you're definitely interested and you'd like to go home and do a little bit of research into prices or whatever, don't even tell them. Just say, I wanna go home and do a little research. So then, make sure you make a mental note of what you see when you do that inspection. And if you see a valve cover that looks like it's leaking or something like that, go home and research how, how hard is the job? Is it something you can do yourself and save money on? Is this something you need to take to a shop? How much money are you gonna have to spend to make sure that car is, re is reliable once you buy it? Once you've got all of that together, so that's number nine, go ahead and do the final step. That's gonna be step number 10, make an offer. If they are asking $5,000 for the vehicle, don't offer $5,000, offer 4,500 or 4,000. Have cash with you ready to go. Take. 4,000 and put it in one pocket, take 1,000 and put it in, in, in the other pocket. And when it comes time to wheel and deal, pull that 4,000 out and say, hey, I got $4,000 cash. Nine times out of 10, cash is always king. And they're gonna go, once, once, once you see that $4,000 cash, they're gonna forget about their $5,000 price and go, okay, yeah, I'll take that $4,000 cash. So bring cash with you and you know, Put X amount in one pocket, put whatever's left in the other pocket so you can wheel and deal and negotiate. So so there, there's a 10-step process for you, kind of a process that I use for buying used cars and all that other good stuff. Uh, I really haven't missed when it comes to buying used cars. All my used cars have lasted me years, and I don't have to spend a whole ton of money on them and stuff like that. So... So there you go, folks. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching my channel. I'm going to go ahead and finish my coffee. I need to quit gabbing and get to work here. So um, this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.